What is a gold sprinkled edge? It's a prepared edge that's been sprinkled with gold leaf that's been forced through a fine mesh and then the gold is set to the surface and then burnished producing a quite pleasing uh, mottled gold finish. Preparing the edge is very similar to preparing for a solid coloured edge. There are some small differences but if you're able to do the uh, edge for solid colour, then you can do this edge as well. So I start by talking the edge and putting it in the press. The first difference is that before I scrape the edge, I'm going to give it a coating of Armenian Bowl. Now Bowl is a clay product. It's very fine, um, ground up clay. Bowl comes in cakes or powdered form. Obviously I'm using the powdered form. And then I'm going to mix that up with EVA size till it's the consistency of uh, roughly milk. Of course the consistency of milk is an almost uh, useless description. Uh, and that's because it, it's one of those things that really comes with a bit of experience. You just have to try it out and after a few goes you'll work out uh, how thick to make it or thin to make it. Now the instructions I'm following are from Peter Garrity. I'm going to put a link in the description for this video to the paper he wrote on edge decoration uh, which covers this edge preparation. One of the big things I've taken away from Peter Garrity's work is the use of a PVA size. So this PVA size is made with one teaspoon of PVA into 200 millilitres of water. The idea of putting a layer of bowl on before scraping is for a number of reasons. The first one is so that you can see any imperfections in the edge, any low spots, any grooves, any scratches will be clearly visible as you scrape it. The second is to put some moisture into the edge. The gold needs uh, some moisture, the gilding process uh, requires the um, size to be uh, wet when the gold goes on and so you need moisture in the edge for that and it helps or well, it starts to help uh, sealing up the pores on the paper. Like many people my introduction to edge decoration and edge gilding was through John Mitchell's book. However Peter Garrity's work uh, helped everything click for me. He simplified things with the use of the PVA size and just his technique, the steps were just a slightly more uh, logical and methodical and just a bit clearer. Now we'll put down the bowl that will go under the gold. Now we'll do this in two layers. The first layer we're going to rub into the edge with a piece of scrunched up soft paper. Now the paper I'm using for this is some high quality high rag content paper that I've scrunched up really well. Some Japanese tissue would be really good for it as well. So I'll put a layer of bowl down and now I'm going to rub that in with a circular action and then I'm going to uh, rub it lengthways and sort of burnish it. It'll actually come up quite shiny. Now I'm going to put down the final layer of bowl and I'm going to watch carefully how it dries. Once the edge is dry I'll burnish it with a brush and then with an agate burnisher. The moisture content in an edge is an important factor in determining uh, the success of edge gilding. So you need to aim to get the moisture content as even as possible in the edge, in the steps leading up to laying on the gold. 
So areas that dry out quickly in subsequent layers of size, you want to put down slightly more size in those areas so that when you put on the final layer of size, it all dries at an even rate. Now before I burnish this edge with the agate burnisher, uh, I want to clean the uh, burnisher of any wax or oil. I don't want any uh, contaminants on this surface that the gold's going to go on to. I used lighter fluid to clean the burnisher just because that's a common solvent to have around in a bindery, but you can use uh, whatever hydrocarbon solvent you have around. After this burnish, that is the final surface that the gold is going to go on. So if we were doing a solid gilt edge, we would want this glass smooth. So I will go back and forth on this quite a few times to get it uh, really smooth. Uh, maybe I won't quite go as far as I would if I was doing a solid gilt edge, but uh, I want it to work out pretty good and it is really good practice for a solid gilt edge. The steps I'm going through are exactly the same steps I would use to prepare a solid gilt edge. Now I'm not a master at solid gilt edges, so maybe my method uh, and technique is not perfect, but it is based on uh, mostly on Peter Garrity's uh, paper uh, and it's basically the same as John Mitchell's as well. The next step is to put two or three layers of size on until the moisture content and the surface is just right and then we'll put one final layer of size on and then the gold will go straight on. So we have to have the gold ready at this point. So I'm going to get the gold out and this is a, a brand new uh, brand of gold for me. I've never used it before. I thought I'd show off and show how wonderfully I handle gold. That went really well. And of course, in this case, it doesn't matter if I stuff up, um, so it's a great time to practice handling your gold. Now I'm going to transfer a bit of uh, size to another container so I don't contaminate the main container of size. So I'm going to put the first layer of size on, and it is going to evaporate and soak in extremely fast. It's almost gone straight away. What I want is for the layer of size to hang around for about 30 seconds. So obviously that uh, first layer didn't last seconds. So I waited for it all to dry and then I'll put a second layer on. And this one will last quite a bit longer and it, um, it takes about two minutes to dry. I'll speed it up but uh, it was two minutes in real time. On this third coat, the, and, uh, it initially stayed wet for probably at least 20 seconds, so it was pretty much close to what I wanted, and it took about three minutes to dry. There's a funny reflection uh, at the, on the left hand side, I'm not sure what caused that, but I couldn't see that uh, from the angle I was looking at it. Now I'm going to put down the final coat and straight away I'm going to sprinkle the gold over the edge. I'm just going to force it through the mesh with that little brush. Of course a toothbrush would be perfect. This gold leaf is from a company called the Gold Leaf Factory in Australia. This is their 23 karat double leaf. Uh, like I said, this is the first time I've used it. And it really didn't want to go through the mesh compared to the leaf I've used in the past. This gold leaf is behaving slightly differently to other gold leaf that I've used in the past. Uh, I'm not a super expert on gold leaf, so I don't know what that means. I guess I will need to 
order some of their single gold leaf to see if it acts more like what I expect. But in general, most people recommend uh, double gold leaf. And in Australia, um, there's just not many choices for suppliers. Uh, importing gold leaf is very expensive. Uh, and these, this gold leaf uh, for two books of 25 sheets, I think uh, it averaged about $3 a leaf. So that, that's about the right price range for me. So as soon as I think that there's no more pools of size left under the gold, I'm going to go through with a soft rag and set the gold. So I'm just going to press it down gently into the surface. I'm not going to wipe it at all. Now, as I, after I press it down, I wipe any moisture that comes off on my arm. Why I do it that way? Uh, just because everyone else that's a master of doing this that uh, does it that way. So I just copy them. But I was sweating so hard, I'm not sure that I was getting much moisture off. I left it about two, maybe three minutes to dry and then set it by burnishing very lightly through some paper. Now I'm using using baking paper here with the silicone side up. So the silicone side uh, is easy for the burnisher to slide over and the paper side uh, absorbs any excess moisture. Now how long do you wait? Now doing a solid edge, the trick I've been taught is that you breathe on the edge and you can see the condensation and you want that condensation to disappear quite quickly uh, in a few seconds, uh, at least under 10. Uh, however, on these mottled edges, I really struggle to see your uh, breath condensation on it. Uh, and it might have just been the day that I was working on because it was it's close to 34 degrees and I suspect the humidity was around 25% and in all the books and all the master finishes will tell you that these conditions are far from ideal for working with gold. So once I'd gone through and burnished it through the paper, I'll put indirectly put on a layer of beeswax and start to burnish it very lightly, directly. Now I really like this edge. It looks wonderful. It's low pressure. Uh, any breaks in the gold are hidden in the pattern. So it's uh, an easy step up from a solid colored edge. And it's a great stepping stone towards solid gold edges as well. I like using the bowl under the gold because uh, it's the traditional color to put under gold and it gives, a, gives it a nice warm color. But you can use acrylics as well. So you could prepare an edge just like you're doing a solid color with an acrylic ink or a watered down colored uh, acrylic paint. And then you can put the gold over that as well. Uh, I did have a blue edged book, but I gave that one away and I didn't take any photos. Uh, I was going to do another one, but I ran out of time. But uh, if you want to, if you do a, a blue or a, a dark color like that, then the gold will look uh, cooler. It's hard to believe, but this is my 50th video. So I wanted to do something a bit special. So I decided to do this sprinkled gold edge, which is uh, something that's a favorite of mine. And uh, I demonstrated it at an open day recently, so I felt comfortable doing it. Since even I'm losing track of all my videos, I put a guide together to help navigate what videos I've done and, and to group them by subject and project. And I've put pinned that to the top of my blog at dazbookbinding.com. I'll put a link to that in the description. So if you're ever trying to find a video on a particular subject, then you're able to go to that guide and see what I have and hopefully I've got something that covers the, what you're after. 
I would have given up on the videos long ago, except for the subscribers and the interactions in the forms of likes and comments. Those are the things that have kept me going. So I want to say a big thank you to everyone that's subscribed and everyone that's left a comment or hit the big thumbs up. It's really kept me going and it's encouraged me to do more of these. I get quite a few requests for specific projects and I'll have a list of videos going out over six months. The project I get the most requests for is for a full hollow back leather binding and it is a high priority project for me. Um, I don't know why I've been procrastinating on it. Actually, I know exactly why I've been procrastinating on it. Uh, it's because of the sewn end bands. Now, I'm completely comfortable uh, sewing a simple um, bead on the front end band, um, but I have no idea how I'm going to video it and make it make sense. I guess I just need to practice it a few times and work out the camera angles. Uh, I really wish I had two cameras to do it, or I'm just going to have to uh, video it, doing it a few times with the same colours and then put them together like it's I'm doing one end band. That's what I'll probably have to do. But I promise I will get to it uh, probably early next year. Now you've probably noticed that uh, I'm trying to do a solid gold edge uh, here. Uh, I had everything out and I had a book that is a project for video. It's what I'm calling at the moment the Matthews end paper and uh, I just figured I may as well uh, give it a go and see how it goes even though it's not perfect conditions and as it turns out it didn't quite work out. The gold pushed off in a few places. I suspect I didn't let it quite dry enough but uh, I guess I'm not a master at doing gilt edges, that's uh, for sure. I thought I'd give it a go. It's also school holidays. There's lots of people at home at the moment. So there's lots of background noise. And it's also stinking hot. So the animals are being very noisy outside. Thank you for watching my 50th video. If you've enjoyed it and want to be notified of my future videos, please hit the subscribe button. And until next time, cheerio.